Rather than doing Wordsworth, we're going to finish the Churning Paper poem in 1885. Like, let's look at 785 and could I get someone to read the Chimney Sweeper on 785? Let me point out that this is one of the songs of innocence showing the two concrete states of the human soul. Um, can I get somebody to read the Chimney Sweeper on 785? We're going to have to go real quickly through this. <laughs> <laughs> I just do it? Okay, I'll read it. Never mind. Right. Page 785. When my mother died, I was very young, and my father sold me while yet my tongue could scarcely cry, weep, 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 weep. So your chimneys I sweep, and in soot I sleep. There's little Tom Dacker who cried from his head that curled like a lamb's back with shade. So I said, hush, Tom. Never mind it, for when your head's there, you know that the soot cannot spoil your white hair. I will ask you all to read along in your books and notice that I'm not pausing at the end of every line. I pause where, you're, where it's punctuated. Okay? <coughs> and so he was quiet, and that very night, as Tom was asleeping, he had such a sight that thousands of sweepers, Dick, Joe, Ned, and Jack, were all of them locked up in coffins of black. And by came an angel who had a bright key, and he opened the coffins and set them all free. Then down a green plain, leaping, laughing, they run and wash in a river and shine in the sun. Then naked and white, all their bags left behind, they rise upon clouds and sport in the wind. And the angel told Tom, if he'd be a good boy, he'd have God for his father and never want joy. And so Tom awoke, and we rose in the dark, and got with our bags and our brushes to work. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. <coughs> now what is this little boy doing? Cleaning chimneys. Cleaning chimneys, yes. What do, we, do you know anything? About the work of chimney sweeps? <laughs> their lungs, yes. If they don't live long. Um, they're also very small children, very young children, because they have to climb up in the chimneys to clean them. Okay. Um, how does this little boy? He's, he, when my mother died, I was very young, and my father sold me. It was common practice. If you look at that footnote for fathers to sell or indenture their children to become chimney sweeps. The average age was six or seven. I cannot mm -hmm. imagine my daughter who was six climbing around in chimneys. I mean, you know, I, I freak out that she climbs on furniture. So, <laughs> but they, the, it's bad for their lungs. They're breathing horrible soot. Um, and the, the, the stuff that comes off of the, the chimneys. And what does he, what does he say, Tom Dacker? What is this dream that he has? Okay, so they, they were all dead in coffins, and how? Well, when they say weep, they're not saying like weeping, like crying. They're talking about sweeping. sweeping. Yes. Why why are they saying weep weep instead of sweep sweep? <laughs> Wait, because what? They want to cry. Maybe they want to cry? What is Blake? Well, definitely Blake. Now, that's one of those things where you look at it. Yeah, it, Blake wants us to think about we, we. Also, he's got a list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's so little, he hasn't learned how to say the words properly. And so they yeah. say we, we, because they're so young, mm -hmm. which makes it, I mean, it's touching and nostalgic and everything. That then they, they're so little they can't say it properly, and the word that they say is what Blake wants to evoke in your mind, which is weep for these little children, right? And so, yeah, he's, he's, and now, he has his head shaved, little Tom Dacker has his head shaved so that it won't get all dirty. Um, and so he was quiet, he had, this dream that they are locked up in coffins of black. Why would a chimney sweep have such a dream? Because the soot's black. Because the soot's black. And where do they spend their days? In chimneys. In a chimney, which would be kind of like a coffin. I mean, it's all, it's small and, yeah. I mean, what a horrible thing for a 
small child, right? Now, is Tom afraid? No, he's not. Why not? He's still with us. What? He's stupid. An angel lets him out. Because an angel lets him out. So where must they be if an angel lets them out of their coffin? In heaven. In heaven. That's great. Why do you kind of go, not really? Because they're dead. It means they're dead. And they're little children, which is terrible, right, at this age. That's a terrible thing to think about. Now, this is from, but look at that last line. So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. If you're good, if you're a good little boy, you clean the chimney the way you're supposed to, do what your boss says, do your duty, then you'll go to heaven too. Taylor, what do you think about that? I mean, it's not biblical. It's not biblical? No, to just do good works. He's six. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know who is telling the children this, so I don't fully understand. Okay. Now, remember, Blake is not necessarily Christian in the way that we would think. Okay. Right. First of all. Um, but if you were a person who owned a bunch of chimney sweeps, I mean, what do you think? I mean, why would they tell the kid this? So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. So they'll do their job and not complain and just not question. Do what they're supposed to do. Just do what they're supposed to do, not question. It's terrible. It's terrible. Why is it terrible? Because it makes them where it's like the only thing they have going for them is doing their job. And if they don't, then they're going to be in big trouble. They do. They it might have a little less of hope. Yeah, so okay. Like false hope. Okay, and if, yeah. if they'll be in big trouble in what way? They'll get home. Get fired, die, or just, I don't know. Um, get fired could actually be good. Yeah, that's true. So, but, I mean, what kind of harm are they suggesting? If you don't do your duty, yeah. well, they're going to die anyhow, probably. And so he says, oh, yes. Um, I absolutely, completely disagree with it. Uh -huh. probably, but just kind of trying to look at it in a more positive way, it does give them something, like, it gives them hope, and, like, their existence is. I get to go to heaven. Yes. Yeah, and not focused on the work they have to do, but just like, yeah, yeah. If and you are really not okay. But. No, exactly, exactly. And that's what you want to do. You want to enter into the poem and say, what's this saying? Maybe like do good, like bring glory to God and then go to heaven. And like their existence is to go to heaven. Their existence yeah. is you know, to go to not, heaven. It's and not about you, what they do. And if you don't do your duty, where will you go? Hell. So it's this idea that, okay, I'll just, you know, clean the chimney. And you're doing anything like, like as a duty, like that's God's plan for Yes. It's like this is God's plan. God plans for little <laughs> six-year-olds to clean chimneys and die. I mean, that's what they, you know, they don't know. They don't know better. They don't know better. Exactly. This is a song of innocence, right? Now let's look at the experience version. Okay. Page 788. Page 788. The chimney sweeper from songs of experience. A little black thing among the snow crying weep, weep in notes of woe. Where are thy father and mother, say? They are both gone up to the church to pray. Because I was happy upon the heath and smiled among the winter snow, they clothed me in the clothes of death and taught me to sing the notes of woe. And because I am happy and dance and sing, they think they have done me no injury and are gone to praise God and his priest and king who make up a heaven of our misery. Now this is a song of experience. What do you, what is he saying? I, I think the last line makes me think um, that they, they kind of make up the hope just even though it's just misery instead. That oh. they kind of like try to make it look good, but it's still like just terrible. Yeah. And the six-year-old or seven-year-old completely understands that even though you think they wouldn't. 
there, and that's what that's what Blake's doing. Yeah. Would a seven-year-old or a six-year-old know that? Well, yeah, I'm happy and dance and sing, so they think everything's great. That's what the adults think, but the six-year-old, the seven-year-old makes the difference. Yeah, yeah, and it's now, now, would we want? Which is worse? Which is worse for the six and seven-year-old to know? that the parents are just going, oh, that was good. It's God's plan. He's happy and singing and dancing and he'll go to heaven if he dies young. Is it, it do we want, do we want the seven-year-old to understand this? No. no. Okay. But Which is worse? That this yeah. Is, pardon? It's kind of like, would you want them to know why, to know the truth? Even if the truth hurts, I guess. Yeah, but he's jaded. Yeah. Look how jaded this little kid is. He's like, yeah, they don't think they've done anything to me, but I'm going to die young because I'm in this sooty mess. No. You know? That's a, like, a hard question to answer. Because, yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be, I mean, wouldn't it be nice for him just to think, yeah, if I do my duty, I won't fear harm, I'll go to heaven. And another thing that I'm thinking about is this isn't here, this isn't now, and it isn't our six and seven year old kids. This is a different time, and you know, it doesn't make child labor okay, but you know, it's happened all throughout time and it's still happening now. And it's, it's different from our perspective as Americans. We don't make our six and seven year old kids fun journeys. Yeah. Okay, okay. Although, although, do you think Blake is saying it's okay? No, and that's that's something that you have to watch. Like both, well, yeah, we, with all of like the satire and all of that. Is it ever okay to eat babies? Was Swift saying it was okay to eat babies? No, no. no. He's trying to prove his point. He's trying to prove his point. He wanted to horrify people. It's horrifying then. It's horrifying now. Here, it's kind of the same thing. Yes, they did allow this to happen, but we're at that turning point in time where we're looking at the rights of human beings, and it's not right to do this to children. But he's also looking at, and go back and look at the title that we got to the whole thing. On page 782, Songs of Innocence and of Experience, showing the two contrary states of the human soul. Okay? Two contrary states of the human soul. He's not saying these are two ways of looking at life, or that one is right and one is wrong. They're both part of the soul. Okay? He's a dualist. Blake is a dualist, which means there's good and there's evil, but the problem is evil is not bad, kind of. Pardon? Like yin and yang? Yes. Yes. It's more like yin and yang. There's that which produces energy and that which stops energy from happening. And creators and then people who, then there's the force that brings them together. Yeah. It's like, so it's, it's, it's dualism like yin and yang. Yes. Um, so think about this in terms of these two poems. We can't, we wouldn't, we have to have both. We don't want children to have the vision of songs of experience, right? We don't want them to have the vision of the tiger. We don't want them to have the vision of, look at what my parents think. That would be, that would be horrible for children to walk around with that vision. Also though, we can't all walk around in innocence like the little and not realize that lamb gets sacrificed Why and there's not? blood. So we all get creamed. What? Why not? Why not? Because we don't get creamed. Walk out into the world and go, oh, everything's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 